Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today we will be installing Linux Mint in VirtualBox. Let's get started. Okay, so first things first, right here we have the Linux Mint website. Now I will leave a link in the description and right here is the download page. I'm going to link you straight to this. Right here, you will choose your version, which is Cinnamon or whatever you want. I, I will go for Cinnamon because I like that the most and select your architecture. I'm going to go with 64-bit and now you want to select the closest mirror to you. Okay, once you chose your mirror, download the file and this took for, took for me around 5 minutes. This might take longer depending on your internet connection. Now I'm going to fast forward this as it downloads but this should not take long. Okay, with the file downloaded, right now I'm going to drag it and we are going to put that to the desktop. So let's put that to the desktop so that it is handy. Now let's fire up VirtualBox. And right now we're going to create a new virtual machine and call this Linux Mint. Note you can do this also in VMware, just as fine. Select Linux and then Ubuntu and select the architecture. Now I'm going to go for 64-bit. If you do this in VMware, you could uh, make a new virtual machine compared to that. So I'm going to put 2 gigs of RAM and create a virtual hard drive. I'm going to select VDI and now you can select dynamically allocated to occupy less space on your physical drive, occupying it just as much as you occupied on your virtual drive, or put fixed size which will take exactly the amount you put but it will be a faster better drive for a virtual machine. As a size I recommend you at least 15 gigs because Linux itself will take around 11 gigs especially in the 64-bit variant and you need to have enough space to install the OS. So we're gonna click on create and if you click fix size this will take a while this will take about 30 seconds right now on fixed size because I put 15 gigs if you put more it will take longer but if you put for dynamically allocated it will be created instantly so let's wait for this to create I'm not going to fast forward or anything because this will take really really a small amount of time okay so with this done Right now, we are going to go to the settings for the virtual machine and go through the tabs. And at system, uh, I'm going to disable floppy at boot up. And at processor, I'm going to add one more core. Virtualization enabled. And at display, we are going to enable the acceleration that is allowed. So that is 3D in my case. And maximize the VRAM. Now the other settings look good. At storage, uh, here we have our virtual hard drive and our disk and we are going to mount the ISO into the disk. Then the audio settings and network settings look good. And the USB 2.0 and the other settings look good. So let's click OK and start the virtual machine. So now the virtual machine will start you do not want to click anything you just want to let it do its thing and it will automatically boot up you don't want to click anything until it gets you to desktop this might take a while I'm not going to fast forward I'm gonna leave this real time so you can see it doesn't take long and you do not have to press anything Okay, so we got a cursor. And here we are in Linux Mint. This is on the desktop right now. You can see it works. But this is right now booted up from the from the disk. So it's not installed as an operating system on the drive itself. So this is basically a demo. Now in order to install that, you will find on the desktop this install Linux Mint disk icon right here. Now you can use the Linux right now as much as you want and gpart and every tool and even firefox but we want to install the operating system so we're going to click on that install icon 
select your language and click continue. Select your keyboard layout and that looks good to me and let's click continue. Now you can click if you want the install third party software that I'm going to do and click continue. Now Linux is a very good operating system and it, everything is really straightforward for you. Okay, so here we, you will be prompted to more options. You can go for erase disk and install Linux, but what we're gonna do is click on something else and click continue. So this is our drive right here. And what we're gonna do is create a new partition table and click continue. And this is all of our space on our drive. So we're gonna click on this plus and select primary drive ext4. And right now we're gonna put a size, I'm gonna put 12 gigs out of 15 and that so we can have four gigs free. Now, uh, I think I didn't enable my numpad. Okay, so we're gonna put 12 gigs. That is, I think, around 12,228 or something. So it is, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the amount I need primary and then uh, leave that to ext4. Now at the volume path uh, you want to put this forward slash and click OK. Right now you'll see we have 4 gigs free and you want to click again that plus we get a logical partition and click on swap space. Now you can see we put 4 gigs and that so it is double our RAM. What a swap space does is if you run out of RAM in Windows you will notice that the files that don't fit in your RAM anymore are copied to a page file on your drive in Windows. But Linux works another way. It gets all the files that don't fit in your RAM and puts them on that partition. Now of course the RAM is the fastest way to store that and it's the computer's short-term memory. But when you run out of it, if you have less, it will start copying on that swap space and because we have just 2 gigs of RAM it's recommended to put a large amount and that's why we put 4 gigs. If you put something like 8 gigs of RAM for the VM, you can get out with 2 gigs of swap space. So we have 4 gigs of swap space right now and we're gonna click on install now. Now everything looks good. Now make sure that the format is enabled for your partitions. The swap space will not allow that, but let's go ahead and continue. Okay, so it looks good. Let's click on install now. Now let's double check a bit that we have the first partition as our base partition and the fifth one as DA5 as our swap space and that looks good. So let's click on continue. So select your time zone minus correct I'm in Romania and now let's create a user. So we're going to I'm going to put a name, I'm going to put my name, and at the password, we're going to put a password right here, I'm going to, and this is your root password. What the root password is in Linux, if you don't know, is, is the password that is used to install and uninstall programs and anything, so it's kind of like the administrator password in Windows. So once we complete those credentials, let's click continue, and I'm going to fast forward the installation. This took around to 5 to 10 minutes, it might take a bit longer for you, but most of the cases it will take under 10 minutes. Now with this done, uh, what I'm going to do is click continue using. You don't want to click restart now because I'm not a fan of that and we're going to go ahead and just shut down the machine. And that's so we can tweak a bit more settings. And at this point it will ask to remove the installation media and press enter. So let's check if we have our ISO still mounted to the virtual machine. So, and if we do have it still mounted, let's unmount it, but it's unmounted. So let's press enter on our keyboard and it will shut down. So into the, into the settings, we're going to double check that's unmounted and let's start the machine up. Okay, so don't press any key, it will boot. And now let's input our password. And here we are 
at desktop so yeah guys this is Linux Mint installed into VirtualBox or VMware if you want so so yeah guys thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more click that subscribe button see you next time on how to IT